here with uh, Dr. Ashley Little. She's the lead author of the book, The HBCU Experience, North Carolina A&T State University, second edition. How are you doing today, Ashley? I am doing great. I'm super excited to be here on your platform. Can't wait to tell you all more about the movement, about the whole company, all of that great stuff. So uh, first off, like, you know, so I know you attended at HBCU. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience? Okay. Awesome. Well, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Dr. Ashley Little. I am a CEO and founder of the HBCU Experience Movement, LLC. A little bit about my HBCU experience is, you know, I went to North Carolina A&T State University. I am an Aggie, Aggie pride. Um, my HBCU experience was amazing, right? Um, I was very involved on the yard, right? SGA on the court. I mean, building organization, founding organizations. And, you know, just, you know, having that real HBCU experience, right? Coming from a family of HBCU graduates, right? Mom and dad both went to the HBCU. Dad is Aggie, of course. Uh, mom went to Central. My other, some of my other family are Aggie. So just continuing um, the HBCU legacy. And um, I love it. I mean, it's nothing like HBCU. It's, it's family. You, you get family there. It's supportive. You know, it's, it's nothing like the environment and just people who actually care about you and people who really want you to succeed. Man, that's uh, amazing. Like, you know, um, I'm like, you know, um, I never got the opportunity to attend an HBCU myself. I did like, you know, take some summer classes at HBCU before and it was a wonderful experience. Um, I thought that um, just the history of the schools, like, you know, how they were founded, you know, for free and newly free blacks. And then uh, is, is you know, amazing and stuff and everything. Like, was that part of the reason you chose the HBCU because of the strong history connection? Absolutely, strong history connection, just being a part of a family environment. I wanted to be where they celebrated um, no offense to PWIs or anything like that, but where they celebrate us, right? And where um, I'll be able to get that one-on-one um, -on -one attention and I'm not just a number, right? And so that's really why I attended the HBCU and it's been the, one of the best decisions of my life. That's amazing. You talk about uh, not being just a number. I know that at North Carolina A&T, uh, it's one of the larger HBCUs because a lot of them are like, you know, a lot smaller. Like I think like A&T has like 11,000 students. Was it a bit like overwhelming for you going to like such a large school or? Um... I actually love it. I mean, just, just to clear it up, the number one HBCU in the country is the North Carolina a and State University. Um, I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I will never forget my first year there. My freshman year was probably my, my best year, right? I mean, I enjoy all of my years. There's nothing like being a freshman, right? Everything's new to you, you know, getting acclimated to the environment, really learning. Um, what to do, what not to do, what to get involved in, what not to get involved in. But I enjoyed it. I mean, it's nothing like being an Aggie. I mean, I celebrate all HBCUs, but it's nothing like being an Aggie. And I am an Aggie to the day I die. That's amazing. And uh, you put together this book, uh, The HBCU Experience, uh, the North Carolina A&T State University. Uh, and it features uh, Dr. Jabril Kazan, who led the Woolworth sit-ins in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, what led you to put together this book? Well, let's just tell you about the HBCU Experience Movement, LLC. It is a company. And uh, I am the visionary author and co-founder of the HBCU Experience. So uh, this is the second edition for a and um, We did the first one last year. We had 44 authors in that one. We've actually went to Tennessee. We have one at Tennessee State University. We did in April of this year. We did one at Virginia State where the president endorsed it in um, May, right, of, of BSU. Then we did the first ever HBCU Queens book that launched in July because, you know, I was on the court. I was a queen myself. And then now we did the HBCU experience in North Carolina A&T State University second edition, right? And we have 54 authors this time. And having Dr. Jabril in the book was definitely a blessing, right? Him being still here, you know, um, able to share his story. We were the first ones to ever capture his story. He's 85 years old. The first one to ever capture his story. And I'm so thankful and so blessed. I mean, just being able to interview him, being able to have conversations with him, to walk through his journey of, you know, the Woolworth sit-ins and what happened in his time at A&T. It was amazing. I talked to him at least once a week now. And it's, it's, it's been great. And we also have the books in the archives. 
at Muffin A&T as well. So they actually archived our book last year, the first one, and the second one thus far. And so I'm, it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience. Jabril is, is a practical genius. Right. And so it's just soaking in the wisdom that he sh has shared, right? And he continues to share. It's just been a blessing. That's amazing. And, you know, uh, that you had the opportunity and stuff to speak with someone, you know, who's basically like, you know, part of history. Yeah, he's a historical figure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Um, you know, uh, what, what are your plans and stuff for new, uh, like, you know, books? Are you going to go to like the other HBCUs and record like you know uh the same type of stories absolutely because the, the a little bit about it and i can explain it some more hbc experience movement llc is a collection of stories from prominent uh, hbcu alumni throughout the world who are doing great things sharing their stories of how their university has molded them into the people they are today right and so yes our goal is to touch all 107 HBCUs, and the main goal is to increase HBCU enrollment and increase young alumni giving, because we do know that that's a gap, right? And we want to continue to close that gap. And so we thought of a creative way to get young alumni involved, and it was to share their story, and $100 of their donation that they give to be in the project, we have to invest to be in the project, of course, you know, to get the publish and all that stuff. The $100 of their donation goes to the university, and then we raise money to Amazon. Those proceeds go to the university. We have other events like virtual book signings that we just did this past weekend. It was amazing. And then we uh, have our in-persons that will be coming up. So we'll raise money that way. And so our goal is to touch all 107 HBCUs. And this has been powerful, just meeting alumni all over the world from different universities, ones that have amazing stories that are really doing great in their community, careers, and businesses are really sharing their stories, right? And so it has been great. Yes, we are working on more schools as we speak. And so I'm just excited about the movement, about where we are going, the future, because it is a movement, right? And the goal is to continue to give back and, 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 and you know, increase the enrollment of why you should attend a historically Black university. You might not want to go to A&T, but at least, you know, you have options, right? And being able to share these stories to see how people uh, have overcame, you know, different obstacles, their successes, their failures, and how being able to attend the HBCU has opened doors and paved the way for them. What was uh, some of the obstacles you encountered, like, you know, attending uh, an HBCU and how did you overcome it? Well, I'm gonna tell you, my HBCU prepared me for the real world, right? Um, being able to be confident when I walk in a room, being able to understand that I can do any, I can go anywhere in the world and own the room, and be able to be confident in my leadership abilities, right? And so I will say this, I had an amazing journey at a and it, it was, right? You know, we all have, you know, different, it, nothing's perfect, but it prepared me more so when I walked into the real world and being a black woman, because I do, I'm a serial entrepreneur by night, I'm a corporate executive by day, and going through, you know, different discrimination as a black woman in executive level positions, you know, if I wouldn't have been to went to an HBCU to understand how to, um, you know, work a room, how to be able to stand up for myself, how to believe in what I, what I am, you know, my position and who I am, and stand for what's right, right? And so I, I, my HBCU prepared me for a lot of different lessons that I have learned just throughout my adult life, just throughout life, right, and difficult obstacles and challenges that I faced. And I have had many amazing mentors that have still with me today. And one of them was in the, well, a couple of them are in the book, like Dr. Rashid, she's my forward. She's one of my mentors, right? She was the dean of students when I was there, right? And also, you know, I'm a Delta. I'm Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She's a soror and this has been able to help me along the way, you know, building those type of relationships, right? And so um, it has helped me in so many ways, just overcoming a lot of different things that I've faced, you know, after college. That's amazing. Um... You know, um, you know, I have so much respect for HBCUs because you see like, you know, their endowments don't really compare to, you know, some of these other schools, but they're able to do like so much and like have so many prominent alum alumni become, you know, uh, doctors, become lawyers and, you know, become judges. And I think like, you know, uh, they're very important and you've seen like what happens like when they don't get the funding that they need with like, you know, the Bush administration, like, you know, schools just completely disappear. And, you know, that's um, 
you know, is very important and stuff and everything for, for them to get the funding. And it's, it's really a great thing that you're doing and stuff and everything. And you're giving, uh, if they buy these books, the uh, kind of some of the money goes to uh, them via- The university, Amazon. yes. Proceeds go to the university. And now I, I like that you spoke on endowments. Because we're creating endowments at every school. And at A&T, we created an endowment last year called HBCU Future Leaders Endowment. And we continue to build that endowment. We gave the money this year to the endowment, right? And then we created an endowment at Virginia State, Tennessee State. And everywhere we go, we're continuing to do that. Creating those endowments. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, what are your thoughts about the homecoming this year taking place virtually because of the pandemic? Well, I'm sad because it is Jiho, right? It's happy, it's happy Jiho for us this week. And so it is sad, but you know, I definitely understand with everything that's going on in the world, but we do know that we're going to make it up for all of it in 2021. But you know, um, I've been on a lot of panels and being able to uh, do some, you know, with the book, we had our virtual food kind of, so they kind of gave us some camaraderie of, you know, family atmosphere kind of homecoming -ish a little bit with the virtual booth kind of we just had this past Saturday. I've been on some other panels with some other HBCU things that have been going on. So um, even though we're not there, uh, we're still trying to figure it out, you know, with, with the game virtual. <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, where can people, uh, you know, follow your journey and uh, keep up to date with like what's going on and uh, new books coming out? Well, you all can definitely please go support the book. Go support our HBCUs. This is a movement. Um, we will be coming. If you attend an HBCU, we're on our way because we're going to touch all 107. All right. And so you can buy the book at on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, everywhere books are sold. You can buy that book. Okay? You can buy the HBCU Experience North Carolina Anti State University Second Edition, which is one that's out now. But if you want to go buy all of our books, right? Go to Amazon. Go to Barnes and Noble. They're everywhere that books are sold. You also can go to our website at www.thehbcuexperiencemovement.com. Again, www.thehbcuexperiencemovement.com. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. On Facebook at Dr. Ashley Little. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ashley Little, for uh, taking the time. I really appreciate you. You are welcome. Definitely. Have a great one. You too.